As always, this episode is brought to you by Bottoms Lab, which is the pants that I'm wearing throughout the video. They're comfortable, they are versatile. You know, just put the discount link down below. Enjoy the video. What's up, guys? It's and today we're gonna check out Sapphire Paradigm in PJ itself. Let's go. Hey guys, a friend invited me to come check out Sapphire and I've always came to Paradigm Mall figuring out how to get over to this residence so today we will get that opportunity Just to explain, this is the inner road and there will be a branch off from LDP coming over u -turn. and this is a one-way street so if you're coming from the opposite it's pretty hard to turn in to the entrance of Sapphire itself and that will be LDP so this is LDP, we are actually under it and that will create certain level of problems in terms of noise, congestion and etc. The accessibility currently can be quite confusing if you are not familiar Then coming in from the road, there will be a junction into the building but it's only a drop off There's no access to the car parks via that route you need to directly go into the basement via this Woo! Going down Okay, we are now in the basement of the same structure So you can see on the right There will be Sapphire Residence The other side will be Paradigm Mall All of them share this basement all together and it's not conventional Then the demarcation between residence car park and the mall car park is separated by this fencing Right from the very narrow pathway down into the basement Immediately there will be a left turn into the residence car park And you go straight, that will be the mall's car park And that explains the true, true form of mixed development Where all elements such as their office, their malls, their residence all share the same basement and that is just effective in terms of cost and construction in terms of time as well So coming out from the lift uh, I must say the entire entrance of the grand lobby to the lift lobby and residence lobby right all are really well done and you can see the width here you have 2.9 and around 2.9 for height and in total there will be 10 units designed in a way where this corridor is going to be highly dependent on lights because there's no way lights are coming in and there will be 4 lifts serving 10 units and 1 service and fire lift at the core area so that allows this lift lobby to be open and for the treatments you have house for the wall panel then you will have timber for the architrave as well as the cutting but one thing like the space is huge and there's no drop which is very nice and this feels like a hotel then you can see a lot of construction work on going right now then going in from the corridor this will be the service corridor and going through another door we are able to access the refuse room and it's huge so you can see the full house and just something different after the core of the building then you have a corridor that is connected to this point area and that somewhat allows you to have some ventilation and daylight right and that will be the heat ground floor already today we are going to check out type c1572 square feet three bedroom two bathroom so when we go into the unit here this will be the living area which is amazingly big then you have the dining then you have the kitchen park at the side so you have this study room that is separating the principal bedroom one and two and again you can see this very odd shape and we will see how they address the odd shape with the internal spaces these are actually located at the end of the building so we will somewhat get views at the corner here you can see certain maintenance works are ongoing but anyway you will have a foyer here before we go in and these will be the unit So the clearance of the door is around 1.07 meters So it's a huge door that is very very important if you want to move stuff in And immediately once we come in on the right will be a space for the shoe cabinet That explains the lack of space at the foyer because everything is supposed to be 
inside lah. And coming into the uni, it's so spacious and because of this wall design this way, it sets your vista over here first. So the distance from wall to wall here is around 4 meters and the ceiling is 3.1 meters. Also the length between the facade line and to the kitchen. That's very very far. And the main concern for that first will be the darkness in the center area. But it doesn't feel like it because of the floor plate design. The whole unit has access to the facade all around, which is awesome. And because of its width, after putting in a dining table, you still have around 2 meters of space for corridor. Right, and that connects you to the living area and this is huge. Then this is the area that because someone experienced the odd shaped facade lines. And I think by this point we have seen several different attempts of this kind of layouts already. And we understand that as long as the functional spaces are still in that linear form, all these experiential spaces that's not really for utility purposes or there won't be any placement of furniture, it will be fine. To a certain extent, it's also cool. But what we can see at the side, that is the very busy LDP highway. And right next week will be giant hypermarket. And the benefit of this address immediately will be the maturity of PJ itself. Everything here is just well developed in terms of education, commercial areas, living elements such as parks and whatsoever, the entire neighborhood and community. A person who stays in PJ, hardly they will leave PJ. But here the experiment will be located adjacent to the LDP. Will it be noisy? Let's try to open this up. Yes, some noise then. Wow! That Sapphire residence is a leasehold project that was completed in 2018-2019 and in total there will be around 300 units which is a very low density in comparison to the surrounding and the standards that we have now and this will be an example of completed unsold units so the developer has finished construction but the project is not fully sold yet so they are still undergoing this selling process that's why we have the show unit here and therefore there will be official prices but there are always different parties trying to sell this project and all of them will have different discounts or rebates but the benefit of getting units like this is you don't have to pay any interest for construction because it's ready and you still somewhat can enjoy benefits directly from the developer for example all those packaging like free MOT free furnishing or whatsoever actually I have no clue on what's the package but usually they are as well the selling price for this I think is around 800 to 900 each per square feet which means this is around eight to nine hundred thousand almost a million range and in accordance to probably guru portal the rental here is around two thousand eight to three thousand two which is okay and i can see the demand because of its mixed development and its proximity to pj itself okay then next to the living this will be the principal bedroom and it's very very long just that this kind of arrangement we always have privacy issue Right? And you have timber flooring along with your ensuite bathroom. And here we can somewhat experience the dramatic facade line already. And I like that the internal spaces are still linear. So when you put furniture and all, it's still sensible. It's still workable, but all those are for experience. After coming in, you will have a wardrobe space with a dressing table and check this out. After putting in a king size bed, there's still so much room around for circulation and you can even have a sitting area here just to experience well the highway maybe <laughs> and the openings are just in abundance so if you were to open all up right it's going to be so bright but i really appreciate the width and scale of the overall room even after having that diagonal line it's still very very spacious also you will have timber skirtings connecting into this principal bathroom so we have basin by toto i think this looks like a toto to me on this solid surface counter then the cabinet then you have toto for wc along with the towel wall finishes and you have a different texture one for your feature then you have this huge window, I think it's too big though facing the LDP highway and this is when I say it's okay for here to be diagonally formed yes it's going to be a pain when you lay the tiles but when I shower here it's just an experiential space there's no real utility and I don't have to mount in the furniture whatsoever so it's fine but I like the finishes and scale, it feels luxurious then coming out 
we are going to head to the kitchen. And the wheel is around 1.7, the height is around 2.7 meters. So it's a very spacious, it's a very workable dimension for a kitchen. We can perfectly fit in a fridge, oven, then you want to put a microwave here, so can. Then an L-shaped kitchen cabinet. And the best part is if your basin is here, this supposedly to be a window. And please always check with the salesperson on the specifications of things that are provided in the unit, yeah? Very, very important. Next to that, you will have a powder room here. And powder room means a bathroom with WC just to freshen up, but there won't be any shower. And these are just some tricks that you can apply to your own property. Once you maximize out the dimension for your mirror and you put a solid surface for your basin, right? Then some lights popping out from the back, it feels really, really good. Then the benefit of a corner unit, you will have access to a lot of windows. That's nice. Then this will be by Toto. Next to the kitchen, this will be your yard space and that connects over to the void area. So this allows the user to somewhat have the possibility of extending the wet kitchen out here. Then they can change this door into a sliding door and the space actually allows it. So this is a rather spacious one. Then moving on, you will have this study room right smack in the center of the space. It has no connections to facade lines, therefore ventilation and daylighting will always be a problem. Therefore, by design, it can be used as a study room, as a home office. But the ID treatments needs to be somewhat figured out first, like a transparent wall like this to allow you to partition for privacy right and the dependence of an aircon unit so there will be some box up elements at the corridor outside later but this space is sensible in today's context just imagine if you don't have this space right the bedrooms are all going to be super huge <laughs> next to that you will have this corridor going into the space itself and here you will have one bedroom right opposite you will have the other one sharing this bathroom. Therefore, this bedroom on the right, the wall-to-wall -wall distance is around 3.8 meters. Therefore, you can accommodate a queen-size bed nicely, bedside tables, a lot of space for circulation. The timber flooring is really, really nice. Also, the wardrobe. And the good thing is all bedroom have access to the external windows. But in this case, it's applicable for daylighting, not really for ventilation because of the air and the noise. So you won't really open. And this door here, most likely it will be the connection to the aircon latch outside. Then this second room is pretty similar as well, but just that the windows here are way larger. Dramatically, it changes the whole quality of space. Again, a queen size bed, bedside tables, a lot of space for circulation. Plus this wardrobe itself, very nice. Just that they need to share this common bathroom here again by Toto and WC by Toto, full mirror. I really hope that this is the specification of the units for buyers though. Then you have this shower area connected to the window. Uh, I think frosting it will make more sense having blinds here. I'm just contemplating whether can this wall be altered or not because just imagine if this corner is entirely open, right? I don't have to waste space for corridor while still using this as a work area provided I don't need the partition and privacy lah. So this can be a baby area or a play area or a mini reading area. Then the space can be so... And I guess that's all for the unit. Let's check out the facilities. Now we are in the rooftop and because of the layout and the leaf being in the center, right? You have this 360 area that is supposedly for the unit in the rooftop is going to be all facilities and the best part will be the view that is also 360. Cool. On one side here, this will be the lap pool. Wow. So next to the corridor, I like this application of the circular columns, right? That gives you that villa holiday feel and the infinity edge to the lap pool itself. And I like the glass handrails around to not obstruct the view of PJ itself. And you can really see that PJ is really this low density area. All landed this side. And at a distance, there will be Kleiner Jaya Station already. 
that's around five minutes drive away. Then the entry to the pool is also pretty cool. You have this shallow area with steps going into the lab area. Then this will be the jacuzzi at this end. We will just sit around and let water massage for you. The other side will be the wading pool. Next to that, this will be an outdoor barbecue area where you can host your friends and family here. I like the transparent roof so during evenings and nights uh, it will feel amazing. Just not as practical during the noon. Well, nobody's gonna barbecue now during the noon. Then right opposite this side, you will have this somewhat floating structure. Also water surrounding it, but it gives you a very different vibe. This will be a lounge area where you just chill around. And it can be in the same purpose for the barbecue area. So you have two barbecue zones, halal and non-halal area. And when hosting them, your family members can just chill here. And you can look at the gold trimmings that continues from the leaf lobby itself. So it's really nice. And the wall's texture somewhat resembles a stone. And while chilling, this will be the view itself. So this will be Ara Damansara site where you can see NKVE. That will be the Subang Airport at the far end. This will be the new building. And you can see lots of high rises behind. Moving on, this will be the gym room. And you have timber floorings. I don't think it's practical for the free weights area. And the number of machines are kind of limited. Two treadmills facing the view behind, so that's nice. And these water treatments that allows this structure to be looking as if it's a float. And then when I think this is a little bit too small, right? That's only less than 300 units in this building itself. So that's very, very low dense. Right after the rooftop, there will be another facilities floor which is at a lower level. Here you have the kids' playground. And surprisingly, the ventilation here is very, very nice. So you can see the trees are actually moving a lot. But just that the difference will be the proximity to LDP itself. Then on the other side, you will have the meeting rooms, the nursery room, the playroom, indoor lounge, outdoor lounge, then a squash course, surprisingly. So those are the standard stuff. But what really stands out is the scale of space. The height is amazing, the width is amazing, the open area is amazing. And they are thoughtful enough to actually add that shade because of this height, right? And the wind that is so strong. If when it rains, it's going to be pretty troublesome. All of this is going to get wet. It also provides privacy from the neighboring blocks, which is nice. And the floor plate is just humongous. After putting in all the things that is required, they still have this ample amount of space, don't know what to do. They're just putting a timber deck for people to just enjoy, have outdoor activities, or just let the kid run around, right? It's gonna be super fun, and people can actually just chill at the back. And I think that's all for this episode. It's now time for Sean Take 3 on 3. So for the three things I like, number one will be the maturity of the location itself. So if you look at the drone shots in one glance, you can see several items. Number one, schools, malls, offices, residents, landed and high-rise, highways, hypermarkets, public parks, LRT stations. And a distance away from that a little bit, then you have Sunway Pyramid, you have Jaya Malls, you have SS2, you have Subang Airport, you have Kasas Highway, Sprint Highway, and etc. So this is the exact opposite of buying a new project in a new township where there's empty. This is the absolute opposite of that where you are buying a location where it's very, very matured and established. So what does it mean? The demand for spaces here is going to be matured too. If you think about using this as an investment, you can already check on the portals on room rates. If you're going to divide it into rooms and rent it out room by room, or you can actually check it by unit if you want to rent it out the entire unit itself. So as I always talk about invest with certainty, this is part of the certainty part where it's point number two. The building is ready, the unit is ready, and if, let's say, if you want to buy a unit, right, you can immediately see and check the unit that you are going to buy. The view that you're going to get, the audio condition, the ventilation, the corridor width, location of refuse chamber, pedestrian experience over to the mall, and etc. All are ready built. Data can all be on hand before you choose to invest. Also, if you're buying directly from the developer, there will be certain perks as well. We can still enjoy rebates, discounts, all those sales packages 
charges around your MOT and legal fees and etc. All those for an existing unit with certainty. And for whatever reasons, these were unsold last time. I'm pretty confident that the developer is trying really, really hard to exceed all this. Therefore, it's just attractive sales packages for products with high certainty. And last of all will be the architectural elements. Number one will be the mixed development setting where the entire paradigm including the mall, offices, the hotel, and the residents where all share the same basement. So in terms of cost efficiency, it's very, very good. And in terms of planning and connectivity, it's also very safe. So as a residence, I can immediately just go down to the basement and walk over to the mall safely. And I don't have to worry about insufficient visitor car park. There will be ample on the other side. And it's also a bonus if the tenant or yourself actually works in one of these office blocks where seriously, you don't need to have a car anymore. <laughs> then in terms of building height, I like that they place the main facilities at the rooftop itself so you don't really feel the intensity of the highway. Also in correspondent to the neighbouring apartments, the height is superior also the materials and the scales within the interiors itself. Once you go into the ground floor lobby, it's grand, the material application is nice. Even if you go into the unit, it's really really spacious. Everything is like 3.5 meters, 4 meters, corridors here, everything is well partitioned and I just wish that I can do something with the study room that will open up the space even more and because of the weird layout main spaces are still in linear form where it will not affect furnitures only the experiential space are faced around the diagonal lines and as we speak right you can see the ventilation here is amazing because of the surrounding setting that is a little bit more on the low rise so right in front you got no obstruction at the back as well that allows the rooftop to have 360 unobstructed views mm. Then for the three things I don't like, number one will be the accessibility. From Subang side coming over, I will need to take a left turn before Paradigm, then you turn, then take the internal road. And the turning to the building itself is a little bit too sudden right before the tunnel. It's not conventional and the main entrance is just for drop off or deliveries, that's it. Well, it's functional just not common. To me, the experience doesn't really tally with the designated purpose of it. So you can see this building is rather on the luxurious side. Material application, like the tile finishes, you have the gold trimmings at common areas. The percentage of glazing for the facade is really, really high. So they are really pushing for luxury, just that the entrance itself somewhat well until you step into the building lah. and that is somewhat contributed by the setting itself being in the middle of a lot of things that includes first of all the LDP that is always busy forever will be busy so if you're using ways or if you're familiar with the location they are certain ways of using the local roads from the neighborhood but that's only to a certain extent if the highway is congested it's really hard to just get back home also it's going to be really really noisy but fortunately there's no balconies for any unit and fortunately again that this is a ready built so you can really test the windows tightness to somewhat feel the intensity in the unit and last of all will be the stigma of this building being built yet to be sold. Many people will then think like, ah yeah, this kind of unit, of course, sure got problem and that's why nobody wants to buy. Most of the time, the main reason will be pricing or purpose of building. Somebody may just book this building in an on-block setting that let's say I want to buy this whole building all together and because of COVID, the sale didn't go through or there's a change in plans, then suddenly the developer will need to start selling all the remaining units. Or another possibility is that during launch, the selling price was a little bit too ambitious, therefore it was not accepted by the market. But as years goes by, the average selling price around the area increased a little bit, then the developer will decide whether to sell with a discount or not and there will be a spot where it suddenly it makes sense in terms of rental, in terms of valuation, in terms of investment. So to me this project somewhat feels like an investment unit because of its setting but the sizes somewhat suggest for own use because the smallest unit is around 1000 and the one that we visited is 1005 which is huge. And I guess that's all for this episode. Do I like this project? Yes because within these kind of scenarios there will always be a lot of potential in terms of investment because when we get to play around several figures such as the valuation fee the discount given the current selling price what would be my loan eligibility will there be cash back if i were to buy this project along with all the certainty for rental and stuff this is the usual playground for property investors so shout out to my friend for inviting me and i'll just put her contact below if you need any more information and with that if you really like this episode like it share it and even subscribe for more information like this. Until next time, this is Shantan. Ciao.